Hello friends, it's Starris John here. I welcome you to our devotional message for today. Uh, the title of our message is uh, The Fruit of the Spirit. And that's a very simple title, one that many of you might have heard before. Uh, we're going to look from the Bible in Galatians chapter 5. If you have your Bible around, I would ask you to grab it and turn there. Um, we're going to, in a few moments, read some verses, a few verses, and, and look at those in our lives. But uh, the, the actual scriptures say the fruit of the Spirit is, and then gives a listing of that. But before we think about the fruit of the Spirit, because that's often what folks do, is jump ahead to trying to um, manifest these particular fruits, which are pretty common uh, decency uh, fruits. They're nothing unique. When we read from there, you'll see. Uh, but we first need to look at what brings fruit about in practical terms, in real terms, on earth, the fruit that we eat. And there are some uh, great metaphor illustrations that we won't look at all, all of them today for the sake of time. But um, it, it, when we look at that process of uh, planting and growing and nurturing, and then the production that comes from that. So we all would know without really uh, having ha had to do it, that we would break ground and, and we would plant a seed and, and actually that seed dies and splits open and uh, out of it comes a, a new thing, which is that plant that sprouts up. And then that plant grows. And then ultimately, if things go properly, and, and that's what we're going to look at today, it will bear fruit and hopefully good fruit, fruit that's uh, tasty, that's edible, um, that is what it's supposed to be. Because you can get fruit. How many times have you gone to the grocery store or the produce stand and gotten an apple and it was sour or uh, gotten grapes and they were sour or just whatever, a watermelon and it was dry inside and, and things like that. So obviously it can look real and be real, but yet have um, questionable qualities to it. Well, if we go back and think about that, um, when we plant a seed and, the, and then the plant starts to sprout out of the ground, I, I, was, I was involved in farming as a youngster to some level, so I have a little bit of experience in that, but many of you would, plant, would, have, would still do that or have experience in that or, or just do general gardening around your house with plants and, and herbs and, and things like that maybe. But if we just planted something and left it, uh, chances are... Uh, it would get eaten by animals. It would get burned by the sun, maybe. It would dry up from lack of water. We, it might get too much water from the rain if it's a, a, a terribly rainy time. You know, just various things that can affect the quality. So we have to do our best to make sure that that plant, whatever it might be, um, gets what it needs and uh, has it in the appropriate um, uh, amounts. So then as that plant grows... Uh, it comes to a place where we recognize that there's fruit on there and it has come to maturity, if you will. And then we, of course, pick it and eat it or sell it or do whatever it is we do with it. Well, let's look at our own lives. When we uh, become a Christian, and, and if you read from Paul's letters, he talks very much about that. Again, for the sake of time, we won't go into that too much today, but it is vitally important that and unless we die of self, which is not a very uh, nice sounding term uh, or phrase, but really it's coming to the end of self, if, to put it in a, a, a more palatable way, I suppose. So when we receive Christ as Savior, if we accept that offer that God has given to be reconciled to him through our faith in Jesus Christ, having given his life in place of ours, then we actually have died to self. We have given up self. And that's really uh, symbolic, or that's, that's the same as that seed dying and something different coming out of it. That's not fruit yet. That's just something has changed on the inside and is starting to come up. So when a man or a woman gets saved, they don't start bearing fruit. It's just It just doesn't work that way. It's not supposed to work that way. And thankfully, because... So many people get greatly discouraged because when I meet with them in Staros, the ministry I work with, I meet with people in addictions. And if somebody comes to faith in Christ, their family members or people around them, understandably so, have this impression that they're suddenly going to, uh, they wouldn't say it this way, but they're suddenly going to bear fruit. And, uh, and they might in, in some small ways where 
we wouldn't call it fruit in that sense, but they might be making some changes as they need to, and that's a good thing. But really, fruit that is lasting and that is, that is good is not born. It takes some time, but it also takes the proper care during that time. Uh, we can't just become a Christian and then sit back and uh, let things come as they might, which some do uh, wrongly. We have to nurture that. We have to care for that. We have to tend to the things there. We have to pick the weeds out, recognize them, pick them out. We have to put the proper nourishment on there, get the proper amount of sunlight, the proper amount of um, uh, uh, rain, of watering, and those sorts of things. So, you know, what all those look like in the life of a human being versus a plant, we don't have time for today. Um, if you're watching this video, obviously you're seeing it on Facebook through YouTube or watching it directly on YouTube. Um, at the bottom would be uh, a comment section. You could, you could uh, make a comment if you'd like, uh, but also Staros is written there. For those of you not knowing how to spell it, you can see Staros Ministries. You could send me an email, john, J-O-H-N, at staros.com, and um, I would certainly get back to you. But more than likely, you have somebody around you um, that can help you understand that a little more as well. But um, so, so we want to look at that and say, well, I'd like to manifest the fruit of the Spirit if we're thinking about what Paul says here. Let's read what they are. In verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5, he says this, But the fruit of the Spirit, that's a capital S there, meaning the Holy Spirit, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And that's a small L there. Really what he means is there's nothing wrong uh, with trying to live out those things. Obviously, we should be trying to live out those things. You know, there's nothing that says, ah, don't worry about any of that. Just follow your passion. It says a little later in, in uh, the next verse. No, we are to know what the Lord wants for us to do. But really, when Paul is talking to the, the church here, if you go back to the previous chapters in Galatians, he's really buttressing to them. He's really trying to make them very much aware of the work that God has done to bring the offer of salvation and the fulfillment of salvation to the people to whom he was speaking, the people in the church, to you and I. If you go back to Galatians 5.1, he talks about standing firm in the freedom that they have, that they don't find them back into the bondage of slavery. And if we were to couple verse 1 with verse 22 here, the bondage of slavery for many individuals would be working really hard to try to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, not having tended to, number one, salvation, having received Christ. Firstly, that must come. We must come to the end of self and be born again, as the scriptures say, um, uh, uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus. So we must be born again, but that's not the end of it. We then need to tend to our growth and the growth of others and the growth of each other so that ultimately fruit is born. And so if we were to fall back into the yoke of slavery, as Paul said in verse one, a lot of that in the context he was speaking to the folks here they were coming out of religiosity. They were coming out of this thing where they had to work really hard to do everything right when the reality was they weren't and they couldn't, but they gave that impression. So we don't want to give the impression to people because what that is is bad fruit. It's fruit that isn't legitimate and real. It looks good. We, we act like we love. We, we act like we are kind, but really we aren't. Now, what do we do if we aren't feeling those things, if we aren't sensing those things, if we aren't actually doing those things? The answer isn't to try to work harder at doing them, although against such things there is no law. We shouldn't just say, well, I'll just be who I am until I get all that figured out. But we need to look at, well, what is not, why is it not something that is being naturally born out of me as opposed to me working real hard for it? And that really comes down to the root of our message is, do you know God through Jesus Christ? And do you know or are you learning how to tend to this plant that we are in, in, in the sense of looking at fruit, this tree that we are? Again, you can feel free to send me an email. Look for someone around you to help you understand this. But I think part of 
why I wanted to share that, share that today was there's a lot of pressure people put on themselves and people put on each other to try and be more fruitful. And, and I, get, I get that. I, you know, I don't want to just uh, encourage people to sit around until God works something in their lives to change them. But I, I do want to help them uh, to, to take that next step that's going to help them better understand what God is trying to do in their lives. So the fruit of the Spirit is not something that we manufacture. We can't. And we can't just try real hard to, to make fruit happen. It is the byproduct of a healthy, purposeful, intentional, intentionally focused life on the reality of what God has offered to man, mankind, through the giving of his son, the sacrifice of his son to forgive us. But then also the giving of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit to dwell within those who believe that through that continued growth, good fruit would be born out of us. So I hope that was helpful. Again, really just a very beginning insight into the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, but I would urge you, if you're watching this video and thinking about that, and you, you say to yourself, you know, I am trying to do all these things that really aren't real or don't seem real or don't seem um, uh, like they're really who I am. I would step back, ask you to step back and find someone to help you. Uh, or step back and or step back and talk to God yourself and ask him, what is it I'm missing here? What is it that I'm, are there weeds I need to pick out? Do I need to get a bit more water? Do I need more sun? Do I need more rest? Do I need more of this? Do I need less of this? Do I need less uh, rest? Do I need less sunshine? You know, do, I, do I need less? Uh, maybe I need to stop going to so many gatherings and meetings and do a little more private study. Maybe I need to find some people around me I can talk with, not just be in group gatherings one of the dangers of um, the recovery culture, uh, it's not unique to them, it's certainly in church as well, is that people get into the trap of just going to meeting, group meetings all the time. And as much as we and they need them, they also need some personal private time, healthy personal private time, and learn how to do that and learn how to be around some individuals um, more so than just uh, groupings. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, down at the bottom of the YouTube screen, on the left-hand side would be the thumbs up like button. I would ask you to click that. That helps us to um, get this video out to more people. And then on the right side of your screen is the subscribe button. I would ask you to tap that as well. And um, that would then notify you when our videos come out, which we don't do a lot, but probably on average about two per week, uh, be a, a video. We put out some music videos of our band as well that uh, from time to time when we have opportunity to play. But I would ask you to click those two buttons and help us to uh, spread more of the information we're looking to share uh, with others who need help and hope. So again, thank you for watching today. And please uh, let us know if we can help with anything further.